Um, well, we definitely talked about it a lot. I'll be honest, we're not. I'm not really one to like shy away from the obvious. I think it was pretty obvious that we hadn't been playing well anytime we left Grand Forks, in all honesty. Um, and so instead of just trying to like hide behind it, I think we just addressed it, confronted it head on, and said, okay, we we have great energy when the fans of the Betty are, you know, they're cheering us on and behind us. And I think it brings energy to our bench and doing all those things. Um, and so we just really tried to say, what what can we do to replicate that when we leave Grand Forks? What can we do out in Denver, down in Omaha? Um, and I think you can see from the way we came out to start both of those games that we brought a lot of energy, we brought a lot of intensity. Um, and so instead of just shying away from it, just calling it like it is, saying this is this is the reality, this is where we've been. Like, let's let's bring some big time energy and provide it ourselves. If that's what we got to do. I will say, out in Denver, we had an awesome fan base. We had a lot of people out there, and that was really cool to see. Well, I think there's a lot of excitement. Um, you know, we've talked all year long about what our goals are, um, and, and getting those two wins were a huge step in the right direction, but then also seeing how some other games played out last week um, helped us too. I mean, it put us in a position right now where this Oral Roberts game is huge. It's huge. I mean, we're two teams that are tied for second. Um, put NDSU in the mix tied with that as well. And it makes this weekend really big. Um, and we're not now looking down the line saying who needs to help us, all those kinds of things. Like our fate truly is in our own hands, at least at this moment. You know, if we take care of business on Thursday, um, it can remain that way. Otherwise, we are going to be in that position again where we're looking for help. Um, but I think doing what we haven't been able to do and come out like we did and, and kind of you know, play with big leads and for the most part maintain them um, was awesome for our team to see. And, and again, it's it's awesome when you can look at that goal board and say this is super, super attainable. What, what's challenging about Oral Roberts? Well, they have a really good post player inside. Tears of Moore is an incredible post player. I mean, she's definitely one of the best in this league. And so um, she shows up and is ready to play North Dakota, unfortunately, every time. Um, and they have some really talented guards. They just play such a fast-paced game. Um, you know, they, they want to play games in the 90s, um, and they can do it because they have incredibly athletic, quick guards. I mean, they have th – their starting forward had a triple-double against us. I mean, she can rebound, pass, drive, do everything, uh, obviously shoot. And so they're just – they're a well-balanced, at least starting five. And you, you toss in like a, a – Delaney Nix, who probably doesn't get nearly enough credit because that kid can just flat out shoot it. Um, it opens a lot of things up. When you got a kid on the floor that can shoot like she does, guards that are quick getting downhill, and a post player, you got all the pieces you need to be a really good team. Um, and so they are. They're, they're incredibly athletic. And again, post players have kind of been something that are difficult for us because we're not exactly the biggest team. Um, but we, we've done a decent job from time to time buckling down. It's just now all those other pieces we still got to find a way to contain as well. Last home weekend for your senior class, any thoughts on them as they head into their final home game for the day? Yeah, kind of crazy, um, especially because some of them seem like they have endless careers at this point, um, Jolie being one of them. Um, no, it's uh, – it's – it's always sad. Like senior day is like super exciting, but like kind of one of those emotional times as well. Because again, if there's any year that our seniors can look back and say, "Wow, playing in this gym is special," this is definitely a year when we've had the year we have here. Um, and so, yeah, there's kind of that like that, that like emotional feeling of this is the last time I'm gonna come out this tunnel, the last time I'm gonna see these fans and do those kinds of things. And um, as much as you know, it's it's about our seniors. I think our seniors kind of it's that moment to like for our fans as well and just like appreciation of, you know, what they do and the the moment and the feeling that they give our players as well. So senior night's tough. It's one of those days like y you want to be able to soak it all in, but you don't want the emotions to take over because at the same time you still have a game to play. Um, but no, it's 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 a special day. And I think it's it's special because of what we have at the Betty. Yeah, I, I mean, 
I wish I knew exactly what the formula was, to be honest. Um, but I do think it's just that that energy that coming out of the locker room and saying we're going to play with the intensity that we need to right off the bat. Um, now we need to bottle that up and, and carry it over to the third quarter as well. You know, that's something that has plagued us from time to time um, and, and something that, you know, we, we kind of just stayed even in both of these games in the third and fourth quarter. And so um, would like to see us come out strong. Again, don't anticipate blowouts this weekend. Like, it's not happening. These are going to be some tough battles. And so we're not going to be able to, you know, ride the high wave and then just coast. We're going to have to be, you know, gas on the foot, the foot on the gas the entire time. Wow, that was fun. Perfect. That's why I like that. <laughs> Edit. Uh, if I could ask you to reflect on that senior class and like that too. Um, been through um, and you know, some of them been through a pandemic uh, yep. change. That's um, quite the roller coaster that you've been through in your career. For sure. They, they've gone through a lot, especially you look at, uh, you know, uh, Oz. A, a Maggie, a Claire, those guys that, that started their careers here, finishing their careers here. Yeah, been through a pandemic, been through a different coach, been through a 2-19 and 19 season. Um, and, and now we're talking about a team that's currently sitting at second place. Like, you, you got to give credit to them for, one, sticking it out. You know, there's, there's something to be said about that. Um, but also just, like, what they're doing to help this program go in the right direction. And, and that's not to discredit, you know, Jolie and Tara. I mean, Jolie came in here and was a captain from the first day she stepped on campus, so that tells you everything you need to know about her as well. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's about the legacy, I think, that they leave. And seeing that they've, you know, really made massive uh, changes and improvements in the program from when they stepped in to when they're going to leave, I think s says a lot about who they are and, and what they care about and what they're about. And... They will be missed, I will tell you that. Um, it's, it's awesome to have, you know, a veteran-type team like that that just, like, understands what we are about and, and is pushing the program forward in a lot of positive ways. Um, and, and we have a lot of good youngsters, don't get me wrong, but those seniors will for sure be missed. All right.